Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. Thanks so much for popping by. So I'm making a reaction video to a fellow mommy blogger out there in the world. And I just wanna preface everything I'm about to say to you with, I am not perfect. Um, so I am a biological mom and an adoptive mom and both of my kids have special needs. So my job as a mom is super duper hard. So I do not claim to be perfect in any way, but I did want to create a reaction video just from my feelings and thoughts about a particular mommy blogger. And a lot of my followers on Instagram have been asking for my opinion. So here it is. So um, who I'm speaking about, um, her name is Micah Stauffer. She is um, a YouTuber. She has a huge following, millions of views on her videos. Her husband also has a huge following, millions of videos on or views on his videos. And they also have a pretty big Instagram page where people sponsor them. Um, and they also have sponsorships through their YouTube channel. So they are making a great income. They've built an income and they've built a business around their lifestyle as parents. So a little bit about Micah. So Micah is a mom. Um, she has had five children, four of which were biological. And back in 2016, um, she decided to adopt a beautiful little boy from China. And he was about two years old, I believe. And my facts aren't exactly perfect. I'm just going off of what I've researched and what I've looked at so far. So um, she took her family of her, her family of, I guess she would have family of five then. She had three biological children. Um, she took them to China. She documented the entire process of the adoption, even showed videos of him before he was in their custody, showed videos of him before that he was even theirs, which I don't exactly agree with just because, you know, that family in China and that little boy deserves privacy. And had they not adopted him, they basically just used his videos and photos to make content on YouTube and make some money. So, um, Basically, she took her whole family there to China to adopt this little boy. They took him in. It was this giant love story. Everything was perfect. Um, and she knew that this boy, who's they, who, named, who they named Huxley, um, had autism. But they didn't know how severe the autism was. Um, so they brought him home and she, they went about their life and they recorded all of the things that their life was all about. Be, you know, her life as a mom and his life as a dad and life with Huxley and life with their f three biological kids. And she really did kind of celebritize herself based on her adoption in China. And she shared and she even raised money, lots of it, to be able to fund the adoption. So what happened, just to give you kind of a big summary real quick, she actually ended up rehoming her adopted son uh, from China, rehoming him at the age of five after having him in her home with her children and herself and bringing in a new baby. She ended up bringing, um, rehoming him to a better family situation than the one that she had now. So what I did and why it took me so long to react was I tried to find rationale in the whole situation, try to give her the benefit of the doubt. I'm a fellow mom. I'm not interested in mom shaming. I'm always trying to understand moms and, and what's going through their head. So my conclusion about the entire thing, and I'll go on, you know, I'll go into more detail in a minute, but my conclusion about the entire thing isn't that she's a bad person or she had ill intentions going into the adoption. Although many people have said and criticized that she only did the adoption to kind of make her fairy tale story on YouTube that much more compelling and exciting and make more money. Um, so what I think happened is that she may not have known what she was getting herself into. Having already, th having three biological children is a lot of work. So she went to China, adopted this little boy, and um, he had special needs, but she said she felt very confident in treating and working with special needs because she was a nurse. Um, 
So she, you know, she didn't realize what autism was all about, how hard it was, and she didn't realize how hard and difficult his autism was. We'll get, we'll talk more about that in a second. Um, so she, after years of therapy and trying, um, and of course, after she had a newborn baby and brought in the whole breastfeeding situation, she decided it'd be best to rehome her child, her uh, adopted child, based on medical, based on medical opinion and suggestions, saying that he needed to be adopted to a new home, that would be a better situation for him. And Micah claims that he made that decision, that he said, or wanted to go to another family. He said he would, you know, during playtime, he would go to that other family and prefer them over her. Um, by the way, he's under five, so he can definitely make decisions for himself. Okay, so, um, so she decided, hey, based on medical opinion, we should go ahead and rehome our son. So let's stop there. I am, like I said, biological, and adopt, adopted parents. I have a eight-year-old daughter who has ADHD. And when I say ADHD, think of the worst case scenario. Like it is hard work, okay? She does therapies. She has an IEP at school. She is work and I love her so very much. And the work is so very worth it. And she is just an amazing, brilliant little girl, okay? Would never rehome her right? Okay. So I love her. She's amazing, but she's work. Bring in my adoptive son, Warren, who is three right now. He just turned three in May. Um, and he has what's called ACC, which means that and it's hypoplasia, uh, which means that it's not full ACC. So the corpus callosum is the membrane between the two hemispheres in your head. And um, so you get the right lobe and the left lobe and both sides do things, you know, do different things for you. Um, but the corpus callosum helps to communicate on both sides. He has a underdeveloped corpus callosum. So what does that mean? He has behavioral issues for sure. He has a lot of things that a lot of autistic kids have. Um, he has uh, spatial awareness issues. He, he hits, he punches, he bites. That's also typical toddler boy stuff too, but he does it to the extreme. We're dealing with a few to like 15 tantrums a day. Um, and he has a lot of sensory processing stuff that we have to work through and we have therapies for that we work with. Um, and besides my two kids, I also run a full-time business. Okay. So I'm dealing with tantrums. I'm dealing with hard work. And I'm dealing with a biological child who does not get as much attention because of my adoptive son. But when we went into the adoption process with Warren back in 2017, we went into it as a family and we went into it with commitment and do or die. Like this is it. He's permanent. There's nothing that's going to change that. He is forever ours. We didn't even know the severity of his special needs. We knew that it was bad because two families had actually changed their mind about adopting Warren. So we knew that things were going to be hard. Um, I had been pregnant with a little boy with Down syndrome. I lost him at 32 weeks. So I knew that I, you know, I had mentally prepared myself for special needs. I, I had interviewed other special needs parents. I had checked in and worked with and spent time with other kiddos with Down syndrome. So as a family, we were mentally prepared. So we made our home study um, approved for special needs. We went and picked up Warren in the NICU. He had a G-tube. His case file was this thick. We had no idea. We were told that he could be blind. He could be deaf. He could stop developing at six months. We didn't know, but we proceeded with love. And when we made the decision to adopt, it was not light. It's taken me so many years to decide to do it. And it wasn't a fair weather thing. It wasn't like, oh, it'd be fun to adopt. It was, this is a life mission. This is something that I've been thinking about for my entire life. And we are now in a situation in a place financially where we can make it happen. And spiritually, mentally, we were ready. And so cut to three years later, Warren is hard work. He is, he requires a lot of attention, but neither of my children, and granted, I don't have five kids, so I cannot relate on that aspect, but I give equal love and attention to both of my children. 
I um, do not have specific set hours for Warren to get attention. I don't have specific set hours for Scarlett. We're a team, we're a family unit. Um, so while, you know, with that being said, I only have two kids at this point and I have, you know, four animals and a husband and a full-time business. So um, I don't know what it's like to have five kids and a new baby, but I do know what it's like to run a full-time business and have two kids that have special needs. So I can kind of relate. Um, and no matter how hard it gets with Warren, and by the way, I never share videos of his tantrums. I never sh complain about him or what he's going through. I never share that on social media just because I want to respect his privacy. So I do tend to show the highlight reel. I do tend to show the good stuff and not so much the stuff that's really challenging behind doors because that's up to me and my husband and the therapists that we're working with in our IEP and his school. Like That is... That's our business and we decided not to share a lot of that. But I will tell you, it's hard. There have been days where I landed on my knees crying. <clears throat> there have been days that I had to take away from my business, which is totally fine and worth it. And I never once looked at Scarlett, looked at Warren and said, that's my adoptive son, that's my biological daughter. And what I think is going on with Micah and her husband is that they have four biological kids and they looked at their biological kids as such. There are biological kids and then their adoptive son. And along the way between Micah and Huxley, the little boy, there was no attachment being formed. Um, and so in one of her videos where they admit to rehoming him, and saying they rehomed him, in the, one of the videos, she says that he was diagnosed with RAD, RAD, which basically is when a child has trouble attaching to one specific caregiver, one specific caregiver, okay? By the way, he's under five. So I was like, okay, I'm trying to understand that. Kids can change through therapy, it does take time. This little boy was taken, ripped out of his home in China, brought into a new family with a bunch of kids, with a mother and a father who are Caucasian and, and will parent him totally different than what he's been used to. Of course, he has some behavioral problems. Of course, he's going to have behavioral issues. Um, but she said that he was diagnosed with RAD. My thinking is this. They diagnosed him with RAD. Basically, they were blaming him for the problems and why there were issues in the home and why he was having trouble attaching to her. There was no blame on her. There was no correlation between her um, and him and how she may have favored her other biological children over him and not given him the proper attention and love and ability to attach. So rather than looking at her, um, they looked at him and gave him that diagnosis, which I find to be unfair. And then I said, okay, so let me go ahead and dig deeper and research and see if maybe there, his severe, the RAD was so severe and his special needs were so severe that it was complete and total chaos and craziness. So here's what I found when I did my research. Um, there is a video of Micah teaching him and working with him through sign language. And he is reciprocating and he's doing a good job. And she's congratulating him. Yay, good job. And she asks for a kiss. And then he puckered up and kissed at her. And then he would giggle and look away. And we, they would do it again. And he would smile. And he was so proud of himself. And she was so proud of him. And I saw that and said, okay, there is some attachment and there is some close, you know, closeness between her and that boy in this video. Um, and I saw a couple other videos and pictures of them holding each other, kissing, you know, all the things that we do with our kids. And he was reciprocating. And then there are these videos. And this is what sealed the deal for me in not being not being completely on board with her decision. Let's just put it that way. I'm very much so upset. And again, dis I just am so disappointed in her decision. There are videos of her duct taping his, her son Huxley's fingers, her, his thumbs, so that he can't suck his thumbs and fingers. And there's this 
this screenshot and I'll share it here in a minute where he's like looking down and his hands are duct tape so he can't suck his thumbs. I don't know why that doesn't sit well with me, but I just can't understand it. I would never in a bajillion years duct tape my son's skin. Just, I find that to be cruel. But okay, I tried to understand that. Maybe it was a tactic that their therapist said to use and they were like desperate, okay. But none of the other kids had duct tape on their hands. And there are multiple videos, multiple photos on Instagram of their children sucking their thumbs, even the older one, the oldest one, and the younger one, all of them, not with duct tape on their hands. Okay, so that's one other scenario. The next scenario that I'm struggling with is they had biological child hour or hours and then Huxley's hours. So they had, they said that throughout the day, Huxley's needs were so intense that the other children didn't get as much attention. Oh, by the way, I believe three of them at least, or two are school aged. Okay, so maybe one or two didn't get attention for a lot of the day. So Huxley goes to bed at 7, 7.30 on his own. He has his own bedtime routine. He goes to bed early, which I understand for a younger child. However, the other children, including one that's the same age as Huxley and the younger one, all go into their bed after hours, after Huxley goes to bed from 7.30 to whenever they put them to bed, and they have biological child hour or hours in their bed where they're watching movies and cuddling and spending time together. Huxley doesn't get to do that, but he does get up early with dad in the morning to have a little bit of time with dad. Okay, fine. I find that to be weird because whenever I do anything with my kids, it's all at the same time. And if it was about the age difference, then why was his sibling who was about the same age plus the younger one why were they in bed doing the things and have a later bedtime? I didn't understand it. Next problem that I'm having with this situation is a video I saw of Micah videoing her son, Huxley, while having a tantrum. And she complained and she complained and she complained. She said, get up, are you done yet? He's sitting in the corner crying and yelling. And it's not even that intense. I was like, this is not that big of a deal. So she's yelling and she's, and she's like, stop it. What, you know, are you done yet? And then he gets out of timeout and she said, this is what I deal with all day. He has like eight tantrums a day. This is what I deal with. And I'm like, maybe put down the camera and go comfort him. Get on your knees and say, you understand his struggle and pain. That's how you get through to a kid, not berating them and telling them, are you done yet? Tantrums are a normal part of brain development. And her son needed her on her knees telling her that him, that it is okay to feel that way because it is. Toddlers have tantrums. Two, three-year-olds, that's all they do is tantrum. When they don't get their way, they tantrum. When something's not right in the home, they tantrum. And I believe something was not right between Micah and that little boy. And she just could not love him like she loved the other kids. No matter how much she said it in every post that he was her world, she'd never give up on him. She did give up on him. And what I find really interesting about the giving up on him part, immediately after they said that they had rehomed him, she changed every one of her social media platforms to say mother of four rather than mother of five. It was like she didn't even add in that, you know, that he was still gonna be a part of their life, that they were still gonna have visitation with him, she's still one of his moms. No, she is not his mom anymore. Boom, end of discussion with that. Last issue I have, um, and there's so many, and I'm gonna link you to an Instagram page where they're raising awareness about this situation and trying to get more attention on the issues and trying to get the sponsorships to become obsolete, not non-existing. Um, because she does have a lot of sponsorships. The next issue I have is that there's a video of her also talking about tantrums and how he's had like 10 that day. This is what we deal with all day. No shit, it's a toddler. Trust me, I deal with it all day. Both my kids have tantrums all day, okay? Um, there's a video of her talking about how one particular therapist was $500 for speech, 
but another particular therapist was $70. And she said, I'm not going to spend $500 for therapy for my son. I'll go with the $70 one. Er, hold the phone. Let's talk here about this. Um, speech therapy is not something that you should be discounting or trying to find a cheaper option. If you find a good therapist for your son and they're recommended and they're good, yeah, it's going to cost you some money. But guess what, sweetheart? You have a seven hundred thousand, or it's like six hundred fifty thousand dollar house, two Mercedes Benzes that you bought while you had adopted Huxley, and you went on a trip this last year to Bali where you spent seven hundred dollars per night to stay there without Huxley, but with the rest of your kids. You put Huxley into temporary foster care while you took this glamorous trip with your kids to Bali. That really sealed the deal for me. I, I understand not taking a younger child or a difficult child on a trip like that. However, she took her younger one, younger than Huxley, and the one that was the same age as Huxley on said trip. So there's that. So I am having trouble understanding this woman and what happened. My initial thinking was there's got to be a reason. Maybe he pulled a knife on the kids. <laughs> Maybe he burned the house down. But if my child was having trouble attaching to me or if my child was violent, I would not rehome him. I would do everything that I could to fix the problem. They could afford good therapy. They didn't have to nix good therapy. They said they tried the best therapy, all the therapy, all the time. They, they didn't, they went to a discount therapy. Um, and they, you know, I, so I think, I, so what I thought was maybe, um, you know, the other kids were treating him poorly and hitting him or something. I'm like, I, I gotta figure this out because this isn't making sense. This is not, this is not possible. If my son is in crisis, which he has moments where, you know, he's a toddler. So yeah, he has moments. My daughter knows to go in her room, shut and lock the door, have some downtime, turn on the radio, read a book, play with your cats, do your thing, you're eight, while my son and I, my husband, work through the issues. If I had ever thought, like I, I would feel so guilty and awful if I ever once thought that I needed to rehome my son. There's not a single thing that that little boy, that three-year-old boy of mine that could do to cause me to think he would be better off in a different home, okay? My son cries for me. He yells for me. Whenever he's not with me, he is clearly attached to me and his sister and his father. He's three. Huxley turned five yesterday. So Huxley spent three years, just as much time as my Warren spent with me, with her and with the other kids and him and the father. And there was an attachment issue with her. But what about the kids? What about the father? What attachment was happening there? When you rip a little boy out of a home like that and put him into a new home, that says a lot about you know, how you really felt about him. So what I think was she adopted and it was a mistake. She was like, whoops, I didn't know it was going to be that hard. My bad. She tried for three years and then she gave up. And here's the, here's where the problem lies. Like, yeah, okay, whatever. She sucks. Horrible situation. CPS should probably check that out. I'm moving on. Here's where the problem lies and what needs to happen. She has made several hundred thousand dollars off of videos on YouTube. All of the videos are monetized and the ones with Huxley are still monetized, okay? Her coming out video talking about rehoming him is monetized. The video of her adopting him is monetized. The videos that portrayed him in a negative light were monetized. The video of her blaming him rather than taking any blame. She was like all crying in her video, pity party, but what about Huxley? Like what about him? Why couldn't dad take on more of an attachment role with him for now? Why couldn't they make that, you know, why couldn't they hire in somebody to help? They had the money clearly, okay? Um, so I think that she just wanted more dolls for her show 
on YouTube, on Instagram, and it got too hard for her. And she had a new baby. She started breastfeeding and she, she's sharing that now instead of Huxley. Um, but the problem is, is she's still making money off this little boy. Um, and she's got a bunch of sponsorships which are dropping her or have not re-upped with her. Um, but the, the making several hundred thousand dollars off of this little boy and, you know, buying your, your big, wonderful, you know, comfy house and your two Mercedes Benz and the Louis Vuitton you just gave away. The third, She also just bought 30,000 followers two days ago. So she is still, you know, she, she's deleting comments. She's deleting content. So she's still in a funk, <laughs> but still trying to build her business, even with what's going on now. Um, and earlier she posted, like last week, she posted her makeup routine and she posted, not her makeup routine, like her morning routine and how she eats to lose weight. Um, and then she did a video of her breastfeeding her new baby and everything's so wonderful and life's so perfect. Meanwhile, Huxley's at a new home that nobody can figure out where that is or what, you know, who that is or if he's okay. So this page on Instagram is trying to find answers to make sure that this little boy is in a safe home and that he's okay. Why this breaks my heart so much is that I have an adoptive son. He is Hispanic. His birth mother is from Mexico. And I look at him now and give what she did to Huxley would be as if I said tomorrow I am done with Warren. I am setting I am setting up an appointment to rehome him to another family who might be better than me. Um, that would destroy his life. It would be highly traumatic for my family. My my daughter would be destroyed. That's her sibling. That's her brother. She would be destroyed. She would be so confused and then she would be afraid. What would mommy do if I weren't perfect? Would she rehome me too? I would never rehome my adoptive son and I would never rehome my biological daughter. So I look at Warren with, and I get tearful because I'm like, that's like me picking up this adorable toddler, this adorable boy that I poured my heart and soul to, into and spent so much time with and fell in love with. And I'm just like, here, have a nice life. See ya. I'm going to go back over here with my, with the kids that matter. Hell no. Hell fucking no. I, it's just so wrong. It's so wrong. So I don't, I'm not suggesting you guys go follow her Instagram, but go check it out. I mean, the, the proof's in the pudding. Go check out the YouTube videos. I'm going to link you to a couple other YouTube videos that I think are really educational. And then also the page that is raising awareness um, and getting signatures to, um, take down her, her videos and such. So I think I've said it all. And, um, I hope that you guys enjoyed my video. Please hit subscribe for more fun videos and, um, life with the Myrons.